Welcome back. We are now doing Hunter. This is the Rise of Shadows preview for card valuation. I am Adwikta, and uh, there is no Murps right now because Murps is out and will be out until the expansion launches. So I'm doing this all by myself, and I get to do his favorite class, which is Hunter. Um, I've had plenty of Hunter experience myself, so I'm not... Uh, uh, I'm not exactly unqualified to do this, uh, but my hunter is a little slower than his. I'm not doing super aggro hunter here, even though the meta is going to be more supportive of high aggression than ever. Uh, but that's true of all classes. So you got to think, right? If the meta is all going fast and everyone has two drops, what's the hunter advantage? How does the hunter get on the board? The answer is going to be one drops. So if you're a hunter, you, you want to be aggressive, you need to go one drops. But the interesting thing is all the new cards coming in, uh, they're not really supporting aggro exactly. But we can start with the best hunter card, which is a 168. Remember, anything above a 160, I consider overpowered and should be nerfed. Every single card above a 160. Here is a 168 card. Unleash the Beast. Twin spell. First, summon a 5-5 with Rush. Then you add this card back into your hand, but it loses the twin spell. So you get... For 12 mana, you get two 5-5s five with Rush, which doesn't sound like terribly great, but the fact that you get to split it up really makes a lot of difference. Um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's a really good card. I don't know what to, what to really say about it besides that um, it has initiative, which is very good, but it's slow, right? Six mana for just a 5-5. Five five. That's not what you want. If you're hero powering, you got to wait till turn eight to play this, uh, and then you get it again. So, I think even for an aggro hunter, it's not a bad curve topper. Because late in the game, you kind of just want to extend the game by having stuff to play. And this gives you two turns of stuff to play. At which point, you will have then drawn two other cards, which gives you one more turn to play. And all that, like, adds up, right? And this also has initiative, which allows you to get favorable trades. Allows you to eliminate the problematic minions of your opponents once you're off the board. So, even for a I just want a hero power kind of like play this is not like terrible Murps is gonna go way faster than this card is gonna allow but i think if you're playing a normal like fast mid-range like aggressive hunter this card will still see play next card is almost as good 163 so another overpowered card hunter has two overpowered cards in the set they're not like extremely overpowered but they are definitely overpowered uh and they they top the list like you guys can't see this right now uh, if you're watching the YouTube video, so I'm going to zoom out a little here. Um, but the the top of the list is Unleash the Beast, and then Freezing Trap and Mark Shot, uh, Mark Shot Tide, and then Eagle Horn and High Main right below that. That's like the definitive top of the Hunters. So we're adding two of these into it, including the number one Hunter card in Unleash the Beast. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty insane. Uh, whereas if you look at Druid, the Forest 8 is number one, but then the other cards are like way below. So both in Druid and in Hunter, this new expansion is adding the number one card. Anyway, uh, Mark Shot is the number three card in Hunter below Freezing Trap. It is four mana, deal four damage to a minion, discover a spell. Uh, I don't know. It's just oh, like these are simple cards. Uh, this one's even a common one. So Blizzard just decided that for Hunter, drawing and like giving Hunter random cards is not like very powerful. So they need to put it on an insanely powerful card. It has no reach, right? So that's that's not that good for Hunter. But still, four mana, four damage, it's okay. And then you get to discover a spell on top of it. Anyway. Um you can see how both Unleash the Beast and Mark Shot favors the more like mid-range, even slower mid-range kind of style. So Blizzard's definitely putting these overpower cards into an area of the Hunter that Hunter is not like normally great at. Um, n nothing new, but just something interesting uh, to note. Um, it definitely makes my mid-range Hunter better. And really, even in the last meta, most Hunters I saw were like mid-range or even just like slow combo Hunters. Uh, so yeah, so I, I think despite Murps' best efforts, Hunters are potentially going to still remain and look very different than the aggressive Hunters he likes, even as the meta goes more aggressive. 
But if you are going to go more aggressive, here's a pretty decent card. 1 mana, 1-1 one, one beast, Death Rattle, add a random hunter spell to your hand. It is a sh shimmer fly. And uh, it's not particularly aggressive by any means, but it is a 1-drop. And if you're a hunter and you want to get on the board, you kind of don't have tools to do it besides just stacking your deck with 1-drops. At least 4 or probably 6 1-drops you'll need in a faster meta. Because if you look at the old meta, you could be aggressive if you just had 2-drops because the meta was so slow. But now everyone's going to have two drops. And so you need one drops. And if nothing else, this is a one drop. 139 uh, puts it at Sea Giant level, at Hunter's Mark level, the new nerfed Hunter's Mark level. Same amount as Alley Cat. Although if you're aggressive, you obviously rather have Alley Cat. But that's like the power level that it's at. Uh, next, we are at 127. So we're getting close to the average uh, card in your deck. Still a little bit above average, low premium above average card in your deck kind of deal. Ursatron is a Ursatron is a 3 mana 3/3 three, three, uh death rattle draw a mech from your deck. So um you just get a free card at the end of it. Again, another powerful ro uh powerful hunter card that is just adding to your card advantage. Um yeah. Uh, it's it's a mech, but we have no more magnetic anymore. Standard still has magnetic, that's why you see all these mechs around, but Arena's getting rid of Boomsday. So, this is just a, kind of a 3 mana 3-3 three, three draw card. Um, there's still going to be plenty of mechs around, there's just not going to be stuff that you do with mechs. What else is next? Wow, it's a pretty big jump after that. In terms of relevancy. So that was what? That was 127. And the next one is going to be a 90. It's pretty low. And 90, you have 3 mana, 9 lives. The card is called 9 lives. It's 3 mana. It's a spell. Discover a friendly death rattle minion that died this game. So it's going to be on the smaller side. Um, also, trigger is death rattle. So you get a bonus death rattle. You get to select which death rattle it is. And then you get to summon the minion again. So you need a really good death rattle minion to die for this to be worth it. And that's just kind of hard to do. You have to have it in your deck. You have to play it. It has to be on the board. It has to die, right? There's a number of steps for this to, to happen. Uh, people in chat are saying, hi, main. Yes, hi, main. But also, Every time you think high main, you should think about the new neutral dominant card. That's not it. Eccentric Scribe, 6 mana, 6-4, six, death rattle, summon 4, 1-1, one, one, vengeful scrolls. You gotta have them though, right? You gotta have drawn them, you gotta have played them. Until then, that card's a dead card. Uh, interestingly, in Hunter, because Henge Clan Hogseed is a beast, it's actually above Eccentric Scribe. And also because Eccentric Scribe is like a 6 mana card, right? Um, Henchclad Hogsteed is actually the best uh, neutral for, uh, for, for Hunter. Whereas for, I think, pretty much every other class, except maybe Warlock, uh, Eccentric Scribe would be better. Anyway, uh, after 9 lives, you have Rapid Fire, which is 89. It's a 1 mana, deal 1 damage, twin spell card. Not much to say about it. It's nice to get 2 pings, but you do have to pay for it. Um, it's only two damage of reach if you're using it for that, so it's a little flexible, but it's just it's not as good as I think people would, would think it is. Um, I like the flexibility, uh, it definitely eliminates the problems, uh, but it's otherwise kind of just stuck in your hand. You do need that one damage to do something, uh, so yeah, it's like it's pickable. I have a feeling it's gonna get over bucketed and overpicked. Um, it, it's better if you're a more aggressive deck, obviously. Uh, because you get to throw it at the face potentially, and if you're a more aggressive deck, you're hitting face more often, so your opponents are getting better trades off you, and so they'll have more things at one health. All right, 84, pickable, but not good. Arcane Fletcher, four mana, three, three. Whenever you play a one cost minion, draw a spell from your deck. You gotta have spells in your deck, you gotta have one cost minions, but you should have one cost minions anyway, so this is Hunter, right? If this were in another class, it'd be a lot worse. Uh, but yeah, but it's not a good card. 84. Going down more, I think that may be it. We have one last Hunter card left. It's Hunting Party, 52. Uh, copy all beasts in your hand. 
it's five mana that's a lot of mana you have to have a lot of beasts to copy and then you would be, be like a card draw card so you would need at least like three beasts in your hand to really get value out of it like it's just not gonna happen um and then you just have a bunch of beasts in your hand what are you gonna do with that not not a good card uh anyway that's uh, uh so so it's 50 if people think 50 is high for hunting party you're gonna have at least one beast in your hand so it's at least a really bad cycle kind of you you may you're likely to have two even maybe so it, it's it's not as bad as like unplayable at 50 it's getting to unplayable cards right like amgam rager is is in that level that's a three mana one five like terrible stuff um okay uh that's almost it for hunter like i said it's really favoring control hunter the way it's set up or not even control hunter just like late game mid-range hunter so it favors more my kind of hunter uh the the way this is being set up although the rest of the meta favors an aggro hunter for working uh so we'll see how it works out uh, i definitely think aggro hunter can work but do note that everyone's getting more aggressive so everyone's going to be more aggro hunter e even though aggro hunter is going to be the best aggro hunter um but to do that you need all the one drops and so depending on how they're bucketed you may or may not be able to get enough one drops to support an aggro hunter uh, a true like aggro hunter thing the way you want it we'll see uh on the legendary side you have oblivatron six mana three four death rattle summon a mech from your hand and trigger its death rattle no just terrible and then you have Virisa windrunner seven mana five six battle cry equip thoradol the star's fury Thoradol the Star's Fury is a 2-3 weapon where every time you attack for that turn, you get plus 2 uh, spell damage. So, a very good weapon. Uh, this is a 121. Um, mostly because it's decent tempo, but it's not out till turn 7. Um, and then the weapon that you have adds spell damage, but you don't have a lot of cards as Hunter that really takes advantage of that. Uh, you have to do Twin Spell 1, which is nice. But generally speaking, Hunters don't have a lot of cards that deal damage. Very, very few cards that deal multi-damage. Um, so yeah. Uh, this is it for Hunter. In terms of the meta, it's really hard to predict where Hunters are going to be. They are probably the least like card-dependent class. Like You could make good aggro Hunters out of basically anything. There's certainly going to be enough neutrals to support it. Um, the class cards that are really good, though, are coming in. And, like, like imagine Blizzard gets this right, right? We're going to go into Bucket View now. Imagine Blizzard gets this right and puts all these good cards in the top two buckets. As the Hunter, if you are trying to go for an aggro Hunter, you're just going to not take them, right? And your offering rates for these top buckets are still going to go up because that's how Blizzard determines these offering, these bucket rates. Like, the more top cards you have, the more chances you have of picking out of that bucket. So what do you do now if you're not going to take these amazing cards like Unleash the Beast and Mark Shot? You're going to take Eagle Horn Bows. You're going to take Savannah High Mains. Like, that's still very good. So if you want to play with the new cards, you're not going to be an aggro hunter. But if you're an aggro hunter, you're just going to get more of the old cards that you liked anyway. Um, and that's good in of itself. Uh, so it, it works both ways. I think Hunter is going to be pretty damn powerful uh, in, uh, in the new meta. Uh, I want to give a shout out before we end this to our Twitch stream and all of our mods who are helping us with this Twitch stream, especially without Murps. Um, thank you guys. Thank you guys for, for being here. And thank you all the viewers who are watching this live. Our Twitch is at twitch.tv slash grinning goat. Uh, thank you to everyone who subbed as well. All the streamers who are here. I see Tex in here right now. I know I saw, uh, sun glitters before. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, um, and uh, and yeah, yeah, it's uh, we're we're entering an interesting part in the arena, where where arena is really separating itself out from like everything else, and we'll see where Blizzard takes it, but it's gonna be uh, it's it's definitely going to be interesting, and I really appreciate having uh, the community so so interested in stuff like this, um, because it, it will be more analysis. Like, as much as, if you've heard my other stuff in Lightforges, you know I'm, like, kind of, eh, on the whole new, like, wild rotation system for Arena. But it is going to make you have to be more on top of things. And so, 
like you know i appreciate everyone else putting out all these resources and review stuff and we're all gonna have much more content to put out and uh, if you follow the arena you're gonna have much more stuff to like absorb because arena is gonna be changing very rapidly um all right uh that's it for hunter and for me we're just about on the 15 minute line we're doing good on time what's coming up next mage is coming up next and i know you guys think there's one really really powerful mage card and uh you'll find out if you're right uh after this until then uh this is Adwick does see you in the next episode